Moments that I believe we should all be running from. In fact, Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. And when he came out of the wilderness, the Bible says he was then filled with power. There are moments in your life, in my life, in our lives, where Jesus would lead you into wilderness. So that you can be empowered to live this life. The Bible says that we are um, we have been given everything through the divine power of God to live a godly life. So, so there's no excuses for you and me. Because when you're in Christ, the power of God is in you, enabling you to live the godly life. Someone once asked me, is it possible to live without sin? Well, look at Jesus, who faced all temptation. And the Bible says, and yet he did not sin. You know, and for many years, I used to think, that's, that's Jesus because he's the son of God, and that's a very difficult for me to do, Lord. You know, I'm just a human. But I tell you, I've, come into, I've become more aware and learning about how Jesus lived as a human, not just as son of God. That's why even Jesus, when he addressed and, and uh, named himself, he said, I am the son of man. Daniel 7 speaks about the son of man that will have all authority on earth and in heaven. And the son of man that represents every um, mankind, every one of us. What does that mean? It means that he became the second Adam because the first Adam failed. And he came as the second Adam to show you and me that in him we can live a life of righteousness. And even if you do fail, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all iniquities. But I'm like, Lord, I don't want to settle for second best. I want to strive to live like Jesus, to be like him, to become more like him in every part of my life. I'm not perfect. I'm just a man on my way to heaven. Hey, right, Pete? That's who we are, right? But man, I'm like, Jesus, I want to be more like you. And every time when things come and your wilderness experiences lead you somewhere, I believe it's the moments like that where God is giving you opportunity to say, I can rise up and overcome the temptations through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you and me. And so today I want to speak about a life of power. And I was so challenged this week because when I look at my own life, I ask myself, Tim, are you living a powerful life in Christ? I know for many of us would probably agree with me and say, not fully. There are moments of power that I can see. So on Friday, Friday we were leading worship at the, at the pastor's thing. And I tell you, you know, when the presence of God comes, we experience this this morning, and the power of God begins to move, um, you, you begin to feel inside of you that, you know, did he mention earlier the heat and the, but you begin to feel the presence of God all over you. And I know that for most of my life, it's been a visitation of the power of God. But I want to show you this morning that through the life of Jesus, we see not just visitations, but habitation, a resting place for the power of God to, to sit and to flow through in everyday life. I'm also learning this. It's not just about coming to church on Sunday. You know, this is great. We need this. It's not about just displaying or, or um, uh, operating in our gifts on a Sunday in a, in a safe place. It's really about life out there. You know, when you, when you walk into, I was we were listening to someone on Friday, you know, she said, she, um, one, of the, one of the pastors there, but she, she walked into a, um, it was a spa, you know, um, to shop, yeah, to buy some groceries. She walked in, and all of a sudden, this lady in front of her starts to manifest, starts coughing, foaming, and, you know, you know when, when you hear these things, you see these things, you know already, okay, there's, there, there's another power that's working and operating in this world. And so she looks at this lady. She's telling us this afterwards. Eh? She looks at this lady. She's wondering, is this lady okay? So she says, are you, are you okay? 
can I pray for you? And the woman is going even more, foaming and coughing on the floor. And, and eventually the, the teller turns to her and says, um, she's a songoma. And she said, so the lady, the teller's telling her, the spirits are, you are walking in a cosmic warfare. And if you don't know who you are in Christ and what you carry in him, you won't understand the warfare that you're going through. And so I really do believe that Jesus would want us all to know who we are in him. What authority do you, the believer carry? When we speak about power, we can't remove authority from it because power and authority works hand in hand. You know, one of the things I was sitting last night just praying through this message and, and God just showed me so clearly, authority is always given. Listen, if you try to take authority, I don't know if you've ever tried that, when it, when it hasn't been given to you, it comes across very arrogant. And most times it never works. In fact, it won't work. It might look like it's working for a little moment and then all of a sudden you get caught. You know, I watched the video a couple of years ago, the man of God praying for somebody to be healed, um, raised from the dead, the man of God. And then they found out the guy wasn't dead. I don't know if you saw that video. The guy was actually alive. In fact, his eyes were blinking. Authority cannot be taken. Authority can only be given in the kingdom. And Jesus, even in himself, in Matthew 28, verse 18, you, you, you would know this verse, right? It says, then Jesus came to his disciples and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Even Jesus chose not to take authority. So the wilderness experience. Satan comes to him and he offers him. And one of the things that he tempts him with is he takes him on to the temple. And he says, according to scripture, if you are the son of God and you jump off this temple, the angels will catch you. You know what Satan was trying to do? was for Jesus to take his authority into his own hands, to display that he is the one, the Messiah. And if he done that, you would have missed this very mission from the Father, which is a servant mission, to lay down his life in order to receive the authority. It's a challenge um, every leader goes through. How do you lead with, through serving Every boss sitting here, right? if you're a business owner, yeah, it's, it's a challenge, right? How do you lead through serving? How do you actually, how do you, rather than take authority, let them give you the authority? It's powerful. When people come to you and say, can you lead me? Not because I'm paying you a salary, eh? <laughs> but because I see in you something that I can actually receive from it's the same in the kingdom in fact that is the kingdom that's why i also believe that god would raise up leaders within the church within government that are not just taking authority but have been given authority by the father and then by the people so jesus displayed authority and i love the book of mark in fact it's one of the earliest gospels i said it the last time and when you read it, you begin to see a flow of how Mark explains the authority of Christ. In fact, he starts with demons. And that's the first thing that Jesus did. He was speaking in the synagogue. And all of a sudden, these demons start to manifest, almost like our story on Friday. Right? They start to manifest. And all of a sudden, the, the um, demons are shouting at him, what do you want to do? To do to us, please leave us alone. He hasn't even declared anything. He just was preaching in the synagogue. And then Jesus turns to them and he says, get out. In one simple statement, the authority of Christ is displayed over demonic forces. 
if you're here this morning and you are battling with things in your homes, I've had those moments where I had to step up and declare over my home, you have no right here. You know, children are normally very um, sensitive to these things. And I don't take it lightly because, you know what, the enemy tries to come in every single little gap, um, little crack in the door. There we go. You know, we don't allow him to. Why? Because the authority of Christ is in you. And so you, you've got to take authority over demonic forces that are trying to get you down. Have you ever wondered why sometimes you sit in bed and you don't want to get out? You're so depressed and you're like, ah, oh, you know? Do you think that's just normal life? God's design is for all of us to be walking in peace, in rest. And the enemy knows that, and so what he does, he brings unrest. And he brings worry, and he, brings, and he comes and he wants to steal your peace. And if you know how to combat him like Jesus did, you declare over him the word of God, and you say, flee. I refuse to allow you to take any root in this mind, in this heart. I tell you, I still do that. Every week. There are days when I'm like, Lord, why do I have to do this? I don't have the strength. And then, uh, you know, you sometimes give you dreams. <laughs> I had a dream the other day, and I, I blame Diddy, because Diddy always asked me, have you, uh, have you had any angelic visitations in your, at, at night? You know, I'm not, I'm not the angelic visitation type of guy, you know. So I always... Um, Look at him, this look. <laughs> and then two nights ago, um, I had a normal dream. I mean, I don't know what the normal dream is for you, but this was the normal dream for me. I was, yeah, walking somewhere, and I, I don't know, this was, didn't mean anything. Yeah, I can't even remember fully that dream. But then all of a sudden, I'm in front of a gate, and I knew it was my, it was my gate of my house where I'm staying, and uh, there's a man and he's got a beard. And he's a little man, he's got a beard. And he says, hi, my name is Barnabas. And I've come to tell you, don't give up, keep going. So, so I, I first thought, Barnabas. <laughs> um, and I said to him, but, but why? You know, and in the dream, it's almost like I knew that you're not supposed to be a this is no longer a normal dream, you know. So I asked him, why? why? Why are you here? And he said, no, I'm here to encourage you. And then I continued dreaming. I still can't remember what happened after that. And I wake up. And I realized that the Lord sent this visitation to encourage me. Um, son of encouragement is the meaning of Barnabas. I told my wife, I said, uh, Shavs, I, I had this dream, uh, Barnabas came to say, uh, keep going. <laughs> By the way, keep going, I thought it was also funny because I just released a CD called Keep Going. <laughs> and I thought, okay, God, you got a sense of humor. He's watching us. He knows all things. Um, and then, and then Shavay says, but why you look so disappointed? Did you want it to be Apostle Paul? <laughs> and because and, honestly, I was thinking, you know, Barnabas and Paul didn't really gel. So, you know, Paul said to Barnabas, go, <laughs> you, you go that way, I'll go this way. I'm like, I probably would have meant a little bit more for me <laughs> to, if it was Apostle Paul. But you know what? I know the Lord was speaking. And I'm being funny. I know I'm being funny. The Lord was speaking. God will encourage you to take the authority that you have to overcome these things that even Christ was able to overcome. So over demons, the second thing in Mark, Jesus overcame was sickness. You know, it was immediately after the synagogue thing. He then walks with Peter, and Peter says, oh, by the way, my mom-in-law is not well. Um, I think it's a message in that. You know, you got to love your mom-in-laws. <laughs> love your in-laws, okay? And so Jesus says to Peter, I'll go with you, I'll go with you, let's go to your mom. Now, now remember, this is straight after the synagogue thing, according to Mark, and he walks in, and what does he do? He rebukes the fever. 
what, what the word rebuke is used in the first incident where he drives out this de- the, the demons. And he uses the same word rebuke in, in this case where the fever or Peter's mother-in-law has a fever. What is, really when you rebuke something, you've got to have authority over it. So Jesus actually just says, I'm taking authority over you. Leave this body. Why? Because it's not God's design for you and me to be sick. So similarly, by, take, by showing authority over demons, he reversed what was lost in the Garden of Eden, where the serpent, Satan, deceived Adam and Eve. And they lost their authority to, to the serpent or to Satan. Similarly, he reverses the curse of the garden by showing, taking authority over sickness. And this morning I believe that some of you have been walking with sickness the Lord would want you to be healed of. Do you believe that? Jesus can heal you. Then straight after that, he has another incident where the paralyzed man is brought to him. Remember that. They, they bring this guy on the roof, and they so desperately want this man to be healed that they open up the roof while he's speaking. I mean, I'm just imagining <laughs> so this roof opening up now, and somebody gets dumped down here, <laughs> you know. Um, chaos. But they were so desperate to get this man before Jesus. And you know what? Jesus shocks everyone because Instead of healing the guy, he says, no, your sins are forgiven. And, and the, the Pharisees start to look around and they're like, who's this guy? Who does he think he is? You know, that he would come and um, declare forgiveness. At that time, the only way you could, you could be forgiven as a Jew, you'd have to go to Jerusalem, to the temple, and the Sanhedrin, you know, the high priests would have to come. And you'd have to do all the rituals. And you'd have to keep yourself pure and clean in all the, the um, rituals that you had to, you know, perform. And then the Sanhedrin would declare forgiveness over you on behalf of the Father. I went to a Catholic school, high school for many years. My high school years. <laughs> and I remember sitting one day. First time I sat in a confession um, box, and it was, it was really awkward. I, <laughs> I uh, looked at the guy. You, know, you can't see through that thing clearly, so you, you don't really know what he looks like. Um, and then, then he would say, you know, son, when was your last confession? Hey, you remember these things, sir? And, um, and then you'd think, you know, when last? <laughs> Now, 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 similarly, in those days, the Jews would have to go through the Sanhedrin. And Jesus comes, and what does he do? He reverses all that. And he shows that there is an open way to the Father. That he is the way. He's the way straight to the Father without rituals and cleansing of things. That you can now enter into this relationship with the Father through Christ, where you can receive your forgiveness. And so he serves authority over sin. And that's good news for you and me. Because he, that means he can enable you to also overcome the temptations of this world. And then fourthly, over nature. And I love this. Jesus calms the storm. So, you know, he goes and he's, he's falling asleep, he's sleeping in the boat. And um, the disciples... Who are, most of them were professional fishermen. Think about that. They're used to the sea. Yeah. These are not men that don't know what the sea is like. And they begin to panic. So they turn around and they, the storm is coming and they start worrying about drowning. Now, if I'm with a fisherman and he's worrying about drowning, I'd be so scared. Because of all people, you would know. And um, they turn to Jesus, they wake him up, and they say, Jesus, we're going to die, don't you care? And Jesus looks at them, and it's amazing what Jesus says. He says, don't you have faith? And he challenges them with their faith. 
But then he gets up, and I'm pretty sure that Jesus would have been slightly annoyed, because I'm sure he was having a good sleep, and he was having a good dream. I don't know if Barnabas came to visit him. <laughs> Sorry. You're allowed to laugh in church, okay? <laughs> and I do make bad jokes, and my wife always gets me for that. Um, so Jesus gets up, and what does he do? He speaks to the storm. And you know what he says? The Bible says he rebukes the storm. The same way he rebuked the demons, the same way he rebuked the sickness, he rebukes the storm. I watched once a video. Some Christians were standing, I think it was out there in Asia somewhere, and this tsunami was coming. I don't know if you saw that. No, not a tsunami. It was a, um, uh, no, no, it was a, a well, t- tornado. There you go. That's the word, tornado. And they're standing, praying, and this is on Facebook, right? And I don't know. People normally say, don't believe everything you see on Facebook. But I would choose to believe this because Jesus could do this. And they're praying for the tornado to go around their city. <laughs> I don't know what other city was next to them, but they're praying, and they're praying, and, and the, the, the video is showing them praying and showing it, and the tornado turns. And I thought to myself, if Jesus said to his disciples, oh, you have little faith. I was listening to Om Angus this morning. You're looking for Om Angus, no? Man of faith. Faith like potatoes. You know, nature is meant to be spoken to by you. I I'm, might have shared this with you, but we bought our house and um, our grass wasn't growing. Uh, you know, when we bought the house, it, um, it was really just a lot of sand. You know, the pool was actually just surrounded by sand. And these friends of mine, um, they 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 were from the states, but they were with me, and they said, you know, uh, this is a beautiful house, but why don't we? Can we just pray for your land? And I thought, yeah, that's a bit odd, eh? Pray for the land. And so I said, well, yeah, go for it. You know? I stood back. Because, I mean, that, at that time, I, never, I didn't have a wall up, so the neighbors were all watching. That's all I saw. The neighbors were watching. And they, they literally just prayed, a simple prayer. They said, Lord, bless this land and nourish this, this ground. May the grass grow. We, we're there now for nine years, and you can come, you know, come visit me. And we've got grass. There was sand everywhere. We've got grass growing, and I tell you, we had to nurture that prayer as well. We had to fertilize the ground. My wife tried to, um, we had to mow the lawn. My wife tried to plant some vegetables. We realized, no, some of that soil is very oily. It's northern suburbs, ne? oily, right? And um, they, didn't, they didn't want to grow. I remember Auntie Rani used to complain. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, on, on that note, um, Sam and Rani will be with us next, year, next month. So I'm going to give you the date, right? So make sure you're here. On the weekend of the 14th, 15th, 16th, the 16th, they'll be with us. And Sam will be preaching, and we're going to love on them. But I remember Auntie Rani complaining, you know, Durban, you grow anything. Put peanut butter, then peanut butter jar kicks up. <laughs> but... Let me ask you this, and, and I know this might be a challenge, right, because we live in a postmodern world where we're not that spiritual, like, you know, back in the day, the, they, were more, they were more aware of the spiritual uh, realm around them. Um, but think about your property now. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to show you something. Have you ever prayed for your property? And yeah, think about the, I know you love put, putting gardens and things, eh? Have you ever prayed and just said, Lord, bless this land? Now, now, take it one step further and think about everything the Lord has given you. Have you prayed over those things? Have you just said, Lord, thank you. Protect my car. Angels. Visitations. I'll, I'll leave it there. The, the last thing I want to show you 
And Jesus also showed authority over his human needs. So Mark then leads into this whole feeding of the 5,000 men. In fact, they only counted the men. It's probably, if, you, if every man had his wife there, it would have been 10,000. And then they probably had some children. You're probably looking at about plus minus 12, 13,000. But here's the amazing thing. Jesus sees a need, turns to his disciples. They decide to have a council meeting. Church, we love doing that. Eh? They have a meeting. Jesus is standing there watching them. They have this council meeting, and they decide, you know, we need to tell this guy this is impossible. This is not going to work. Has he counted? Uh, we, don't, we don't have money. I mean, the, the treasurer is there. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> the treasurer is there. He's having his say. We don't have enough money. You know, and everybody's figuring out how we're going to tell Jesus. This is, this is a, this is, don't even, don't make any public statements, please. Don't make any promises. Um, one of them decides to go, not be part of the council meeting. I think it was Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, by the way, Andrew is our finance director of the church. <laughs> So Andrew takes a walk, and you know what Andrew does? He looks to see what food is there. <laughs> you know what food is there in the 5,000 plus people? And he finds fish and buns. So I'm, I'm telling you, just think, this is, these are men. These are, they are no super beings. And, you know, these are just like you and me. Andrew looks at that food, and he thinks to himself, okay, wait, maybe if I take that food to Jesus, either, two things, either, Jesus, here we go, now you must make it happen, right? Or, you see, Nan, eh? this is all I could find. <laughs> I see it's fish and chips here, it's fish and buns, man. <laughs> uh, this is all I can find. So, so Jesus takes the, the, the fish and the bread, and he, he looks at Andrew, and I can tell you immediately the council is not confused. Because the council had their plan. How are they going to tell you? This is not going to work. Just can it, you know. Jesus takes the, the fish and the puns, and he lifts it up, and the Bible says, and he gives thanks. I would have thought that Jesus would have said, please just multiply this, Lord. He doesn't. He says, thank you. The power lies within a grateful heart. Moaning is not going to bring anything. So he lifts it up, and then they start taking baskets. I always ask the Lord this question, where did the baskets come from? <laughs> we don't know. But maybe somebody came with, came all together. I'll tell you why I asked the question, because the Bible says that once everybody's fed, there were baskets sitting there. So maybe the, the baskets multiplied, or somebody came to sell baskets, donated it. <laughs> but listen, not just the needs of those that were there. What happened to the baskets that were filled afterwards? I would say they took it home. The families were fed. They, they took it to mommy and daddy and uncle and auntie and everybody else that is sitting there with nothing to eat, the needs of mankind is found in, is fulfilled in Christ. And when you go with a grateful heart, right, and you say, Lord, I thank you even for the little that I have, I'm telling you, before you know it, you're going to be feeding the whole street in your, in your community. <laughs> Power I think we really got to define what power is. You know, um, or redefine it. We tend to think it's the man of God who is praying the doom or who is performing the miracle. When the Lord would say to you this morning, you are the miracle. And you, in Him, you can walk this out and you'll see miracles begin to happen. And so this friend of mine, he was pastoring in Durban, and um, at, 
I just want to do one thing before I speak about him because we were, we were mentored and trained and loved on and pastored by a man that's sitting here this morning. And I want to honor him. <laughs> Mike Surf, I want to honor you. And um, we were young students. And um, Mike and his wife, Corin, uh part of a, a quite a big pastoral group, but Mike led that group and they just loved on us. You know, challenged us, rebuked when we needed to be rebuked. Tell you, I tell you, um, fathering is so important in this world. And um, if you've never had a spiritual, we, you know, it's not something to be worried about, spiritual father. It's, if it's done in love, it will grow you. So I want to honor you, Mike. And thank you for coming. You didn't tell me when you're coming. <laughs> but thank you for just showing up and being here. Um, and so Mark Simpson. Mark Simpson um, was also one of our, uh, the leaders at that time and also being raised and trained under uh, men like Mike and Glenn Robertson and Paul Daniel and others. And um, he's leading a church in Durban. And Mark phones me and says, man, you won't believe us. We were out on the street. <laughs> okay. Now, if you know Mark, maybe we should get Mark here one day. This is typical Mark. So Mark says, we're on the streets and we're going mission, you know, praying for people on the streets. And they're out in CBD in, in Durban. And um, the whole team are so excited that they forgot that they don't have money to feed themselves. It's a couple of broke students, you know. That just happens when you're a student, right? <laughs> They're just so zealous about getting out there and they want to spread the gospel and they don't have money to feed themselves. So Mark is hitting up the team, turns to them and said, guys, listen, man, we just, we believe in Jesus can perform miracles. So why don't we just pray and ask the Lord because they wanted pizza. <laughs> you think God doesn't care about pizza, <laughs> And they say, why don't we just pray? And obviously, they're all excited because they've just been praying for people. People are getting um, healed and all. And so they start praying. And you know, in Mark's mind, and I guess this, is, this would be for every one of us, you tend to think somebody's going to come up to you and just give you the money, right? But the Lord shocks them completely. And listen, if you, when Mark comes and you hear Mark, it's not easy for Mark to be shocked, <laughs> okay? So while they're standing praying, they hear coins falling on a car. The guy is still in the car. The car owner is in the car. And the coins are falling on his car. And he jumps out and they run over because they obviously knew that they've been praying for money. <laughs> so they come over and they start picking up and the guy says, is this your money? They said, yeah, it's our money. And they, where does money come from? Who's throwing the money up? They counted the money. And it was enough to buy pizzas for the team. Now, you can tell me, listen, I'm, I've been there. You can look at me and say, yeah, Tim, I don't know. You've got to verify this. Eh? Like, hey, yeah, let, let's get an investigator, right? Let, let's, let's put some team together. We'll get Andrew in, okay? <laughs> get some finance guys. Let's go and check this out. Is this true? But let me tell you, if the Bible is true, you believe what is written there? But Jesus walked on water. Do you know they needed money? The coin came out of the fish. If the Bible is true, as you declare, why would God not do that today? I haven't even opened my sermon yet. I'm being honest with you. I'm not going to. I've just been sharing from the book of Mark. And you know what? It's probably best I do that. I'll leave it there because you can go and read the book of Mark to check if this guy is for real. <laughs> and so Jesus says, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. And he says, therefore go. Do you know what he says? What is being displayed in one passage right there is a transaction of authority. That word, Therefore. I have been given all authority, says Jesus, and I therefore send you with that same authority to go and be a witness in this world, to go and display the kingdom of God in this world, to go and lay hands on the sick, and they will be healed, to go and cast out demons, 
and set the captives free, to declare the good news of the gospel to everyone out there. And so I, I'm going to land now <laughs> because I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come. You see, I'll come back to the word knowing. In fact, let, let me give you one scripture so that you can say, at least you read one scripture in church. <laughs> Paul writes in Ephesians, he says, the 17, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Isaiah says that the spirit of wisdom and understanding is the spirit of the Lord. That's what the Holy Spirit does, and it begins there. For you and me to know him better. That word know? I can put a, in fact, let me do this. I, this is a bottle of water. How do you know that? Because you're reading a label that says Father's eyes. Yeah, you can have, a, you can have a, a, a bottle of water that's got a label and says spring water. You can trust that. And you can say, well, I know that is spring water. And the label says. But there's a difference when you not only read the label. Because there it says, but it's not here. This is donated as well to the church, by the way. The generous people. It says here, there's no fat in here. <laughs> okay. But once you taste, and you miss, you will only know for real through experience. That's why David says, taste and see. Oh. We, we need a taste. You see, Jesus is real, and you need to experience him. And so that's all we're going to do now. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Because the very power that raised Christ from the dead is living inside of everyone who believes in Christ. And it's working in you. What is it doing? It's working to transform you into the very likeness of him. So, Father, I pray right now, you come, Holy Spirit. And some of you, you've heard this message of Jesus for many years. But I want to invite you to not just hear, but to experience. And so I'm going to ask that we, if you can just close your eyes for a moment, and we just honor this moment with the Lord. For those that want to experience him more. I'm going to invite you. And I'm going to ask um, if we can make a little bit of space in front. But I'm going to ask you to come. Because I'm going to ask you to come and stand before the King of Kings. And say, Lord, that's me. I, I've heard of you. But Lord, I want to experience you. And for, for some, I believe, it's also just being almost a season of dryness. And literally the Lord said to you, I'm here because I want to feed you and I want to fill you and give you more than enough so that you can overflow with the goodness of the Lord wherever you go. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite you to, just to come. And we're gonna just pray for you. And we're gonna let the Holy Spirit do what he does. hungry heart, Father, a thirsty heart, all who are thirsty and all who are weak, come to the Father. And you, you can, you know, in this church, you're free to do whatever you need to do. If you want to sit down, lie down, you want to 
just, just posture yourself to receive this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. You know, learning to wait on Him. I sat yesterday in my studio and I said, Lord, I don't want to just preach a message. I want you to speak to your people. Spirit of wisdom and revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And right now, even for you that are sitting out there, I just do believe the Lord would fill you this morning. Wisdom is the ability to apply that which God has taught you. Oh, Father, thank you that you unlock wisdom this morning, Holy Spirit, to apply things in the lives, things that you're struggling with, things that you're battling with. The Lord, in one moment, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can give you wisdom. Revelation. It's for you to see and understand things that is beyond your natural ability. Thank you, Father. Even right now, Lord, the peace of God that, that surpasses understanding, that there will come revelation, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so we're just going to pray that the Lord will fill you up now, that the Holy Spirit will just give you fresh, fresh perspective, fresh understanding, fresh revelation in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Let that well, let that well just begin to spring forth, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. So all, you see, all the Lord is doing now is just filling you up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Dry bones begin to speak. See, when Jesus comes and he pours out this healing, this deliverance. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Your grace is sufficient. 
Your grace is sufficient. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. I see sails blowing over you. It's like a fresh wind that's blowing your sails of your life. You were going in one direction. The Lord says, I'm moving you into a new direction. You've been seeing some of the movements happening already this year. Uh, I hear the Lord say, and, and there's more coming. There's more coming. So blow your wind, Father. Navigate this life, Lord. That which is in the past is gone, I hear the Father say. That the new has come. Jesus' name. So there's a lot that God is doing now, and I do just want to encourage you, if you are sitting out there, um, just for a few minutes, engage a little bit, and allow the Holy Spirit to show you, show you. You know, I'm seeing just new revelation of um, direction for life. You've been going one way, and you can feel it's time to move a different way. So I speak it over you, sir. I see the Lord is just moving you into new things. Um, I pray that God will give favor. I see open doors. Doors begin to open. It's almost like there's been a season of doors shutting and closing and not sure which direction to go. But I, I just see doors opening for your life. The Lord says that he's able to do that. He's able to open doors. Even doors that you never thought would come your way would open up to you. So I just want to give that to you. You can test that word as well. If you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. There are new ideas for businesses. It's fresh revelation, Father. And things that hasn't worked, I believe the Lord would bring New, th new ways to do things. So even right now, he will show you new strategies. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. I see a fire burning on, on you. On you. I see a fire burning on you. And um, I just, I hear the word calling destiny. That you've, all, you've, you've been walking towards that which God has called you. And can I take your hand? And I just want to, like, lift you into your calling. So I feel like. In fact, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift you into your calling. The Lord would say, I'm pulling you in to your calling. The pathway is not going to be one of striving, but it's going to be one of walking. And I'm seeing a picture of you walking in a pathway where there's flowers on either side and you're just picking them, enjoying the walk. They hear the Lord say, enjoy the journey because the destination will come. <laughs> Father, I thank you right now, Lord. Thank you, Father, for peace. I see a ministry. And I, it's not a ministry just locally uh, in this, this city or this but I see a traveling ministry. And you don't know how this is going to work. And you know what? That's the Lord. <laughs> because he's going to make it work. So, Father, pull her into a destiny right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The, uh, the Lord has given you gifts. But I feel like there's more gifts. I see almost like a, a basket of new jewels being placed inside, new treasures, and the gift of prophesying, the gift of laying your hands on the sick. But the Lord says it's also a gift that is going to bless you with the ability to speak His Word.
that your lips will begin to be anointed like um, Jeremiah to speak the word of God. And so thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. We got a few more minutes. I don't know. You, maybe all you need this morning is just peace. <laughs> just a peaceful mind and a heart at peace. Thank you, Jim. Oh. So the, this. Diddy, you want to just maybe lay hands on this young man there? But I, I, I see a fresh season over you. Um, yes, that's the guy. I see a fresh season over you. Samuel. Samuel. That's a beautiful name, man. <laughs> I see a fresh season over you. I, I see the Lord just opening up another pathway. Um, there's a lot that is given you, gifting, and the Lord, I would say to you, you're not only defined by what you know right now, that there's more. And so there's been a tugging in your heart, and say, Lord, I need more, and I want more, and there's been seasons of plenty, and seasons of almost nothing, and it's been up and down, and God said to you, because I want you to go for the more, don't be comfortable in the, in the giftings that you know. So we're just going to unlock that. Um, whatever that is, Father, new gifts to begin to flow. So the gifts of the Spirit, we're going to be going into that for the next two weeks. But I really believe the Lord would want to unlock these gifts in every believer. It's for every believer. And so let it, Father, flow through, not just in, but through, that it can operate to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I want to bless the, uh, the two ladies next to you as well. It's your wife. Okay. Is this your family? Yeah. I see a mighty um, connection between you in ministry. I don't know if you're really operating in that. But I just see your, is that your mom? Okay, but I see there's a union of destiny in the Lord is called for both of you, and you're a very strong lady, and um, there's, there's strength in your togetherness. Um, but you're in a season where the Lord is almost just pausing because He's putting things into perspective and He's putting things into place. And it's a season where you might have asked, Lord, but what's happening now? Because you saw the abundance, you saw the fruit, but now it's like, why is it so quiet, Lord? But the Lord would say to you, he's got you right there where he needs you. And so don't be impatient, because he's about to open it all up and to show you. So bless them, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let this family be such a light to many around them. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So either that clock is standing still, but we, we just, if you, if you need to run, I'm going to ask you just for two more minutes, and then we're going to pray to close. But I, I do believe the Lord would want to release words this morning. And um, if you know me, I'm the hesitant prophet. <laughs> I don't like prophesying unless the Lord says do it. You want to come. There's just one word that's been on there when we spoke about the extra basket, and that word is abundance. God, the Lord is a Lord of abundance in love and in everything that he gives. Thank you for your abundance, Lord. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, um, Diddy can join in. And if, if you want a word, I don't normally do this, <laughs> but if you want a word, I want you to just raise your hand. And be bold. Yeah, just raise a hand. <laughs> My drinking buddy is coming. <laughs> I'm Auntie Pat. We have Auntie Pat. <laughs> so, okay, so there's quite a few. And I'm, I'm going to, Didi, you're going to help me. But we're going to release some words. 
So I want to start with you. And I can't release the word um, over you alone, Gay. I'm going to release it over you and Craig because you are one. <laughs> but I see a season of newness coming where um, the, the old is coming to an end. And two weeks ago, I know there was something the Lord showed me and you just confirmed it. But I believe that you're going to be walking into the new season of rest. The word is not retirement and don't be scared of that. The word is actually in your assignment. So where the world may see retirement, God sees new assignment. And so God is about to release you into a new assignment for his kingdom because he's been been preparing you for that season. I see financial blessing coming in a way that you've never, ever seen before and in a way that you would never have thought it would come. Because what seems to come to an end and may have seemed an, as end of an era is only the beginning of a new era. And so we just, Father, declare that over them in Jesus' name. And I, I believe the window is, is, is now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step into faith with you. The window is now. Because as the blessing is on that business, the Lord is giving you strategy to sell. I pray, Father, the locusts will not make their way anywhere close to this business in Jesus' name. That you seal this business right now in the season of blessing to be able to be sold off. And the right buyer will also come. And so we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the season of new assignment in Jesus' name. Can I release that word over some others as well? It's not about retirement. It's about new assignment. Don't be scared, you know, to let go of the old and take on the new. So, come with me. I wanted to, um, is your hand up? Your hand, oh, praying or your hand up? Okay. So, I was just going to speak a word over you as well. So, thank you, Father, the Nokia family. Oh, they're such a blessing. Such a blessing. Natasha, you have not yet seen the fullness of what God is about to unlock all that you've done in your ministry or to children, the Lord would say to you, there's more than just what you've seen. Um, the multiplication you've been asking for. I hear the Lord saying clearly, you are raising an army. An army that is able to do what you have been doing. And I know we're going to hear your story in two weeks' time. But I, I, I want to say this to you. you. God is going to use you and Anton to raise up an army of parents who are willing to foster children, to bring healing to these children. And so I pray for strategy, Lord. I pray for multiplication strategy. I see you in front of people speaking, not children, in front of people Adults speaking and raising them up to bring healing to broken children. And so we bless them, Father. We ask you to protect their income and their finances in Jesus' name. Because the enemy who does not like that <laughs> in Jesus' name. Um, did he, wherever you are, you can go for it. Oh, <laughs> did he's on that side. My hand is up. Yes, thank you, Lord, for Anne. And Arthur, because again, I can't separate you. <laughs> Thank you, Father, new assignment, new assignment, new assignment, new assignment. The Lord has placed so much in you. And it is not the end. It is only the beginning. <laughs> and more is to come. So, Father, I thank you for the musical gifting, but also for, and what I see in you is a mothering, counseling gift. The ability to release wisdom. To younger women. You are, you, are, you are such a mother. Even when, when we see you with your own child, Melissa, you are such a mother that the Lord says to you, would say to you that you are able to mother more than just your biological children. And I see, I see literally women coming. I don't know what, if this is in your heart, but I see women coming, sitting, almost as though they're sitting at your feet, listening. Father, we release the mother anointing. Lord, because we need that in this world right now. Father, let wisdom flow through her, through words, and even through the advice that you would give to those around you. 
And thank you, Lord Jesus. Let this season be that season. In Jesus' name.